Holes seem like something that should be pretty darn easy, but when you're trying to make holes that fasteners are supposed to be inserted to, it can get a little bit more challenging. So in this video, we're gonna go through all the different ways of making holes for screws to go into, and the ways of designing them so that they can be optimized for mass production. So the very first version of any hole is actually the most basic, which is to just design a hole that is slightly larger or even slightly smaller than the fastener that you plan to go into it. And then you can either use a self-tapping screw or a standard screw itself that just binds into the plastic and sets itself. This is fine for low criticality situations, but even though these are pretty simple to do and are actually benefited by the layer lines of 3D printing because they provide the ridges for the threads to go into, it's not always the most optimal because there's a limit to how much you can bite into a 3D printed part without causing things like layer splitting, and you have a limited amount of control of the dimensionality of those holes, especially when they're small. If you're doing a hole from the top, doesn't really matter. Just make sure that the walls are quite thick, at least one millimeter. If you're doing it in from the side, sometimes the holes can sag just a little bit and you end up with a slightly squashed circle. The way to compensate for that is to actually make the hole slightly oval. This makes sure that you end up with a perfectly circular hole as a result and a screw can screw in more easily. However, that's the only if you are wanting to do standard holes without a lot of effort or adding in other hardware. You can improve the strength of threaded holes by doing things like heat set inserts. Heat inserts are a very easy way to add threads to a plastic part because you essentially just melt the threads into it by adding in a small metal part that is sunk into the holes. With this, you want to engineer the hole so that it has room for the insert going into it, and also want to ensure that the part as a whole is almost solid and there's about one to two millimeters of material around the hole itself. This is something to explain to us in manufacturing in order to ensure that you have a part that is reliable and can accept the heat inserts or have us quote the insertion of the heat inserts itself so that we can make sure that the parts are good and can produce them and deliver a final part with heat inserts in it. However, this is a kind of an old traditional way of creating threaded holes inside of plastic parts. With 3D printing, you're actually able to do impossible things that have never really been possible before. Right here, this part has metal threads inside of it, even though you can't see them. And the reason is, is because we have inserted a nut into the part in both directions of the holes. The reason for this is since we are additively building this part, you're able to grow up the part, create a slot for a nut to be dropped into it, and then the part is able to continue on printing. So now you have an embedded nut inside of the plastic part, which has never been possible with any other manufacturing process and is a unique benefit because now you can have a very large flange back in the center of the piece so that pull out is effectively impossible. Whereas with heat inserts, you only have the wall adhesion essentially holding that insert in there. With a flanged nut inside of the part, you are able to ensure that pull out is not really a possibility at all. And you can create something very robust and you can have any size of thread that you want and very reliably. But what many people end up doing and wanting to do is going back to just the standard plastic hole and adding threads to the model itself. While this can be done, and in some cases is very useful because you eliminate the secondary processing that nuts or heat inserts do, there's a limit on the size of these because this case has very small holes with M3 threads put into them, but you can't really see the M3 threads because they are so small that the nozzle of an FDM machine can't really print them. And even in the side hole, they're so fine that the nozzle is wider than the threads themselves. So you basically just end up blending them out and they're not really effectively there. If you're going below a fastener that is smaller than an eighth of an inch diameter, very generally the threads will be too small to actually be printed. You want uh, any single feature to be at least 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters in size. And since threads might start there, but then go down to a taper, they very often are just immediately ignored and you end up with a hole that in the model has threads, but in practicality really doesn't. And this is something to be aware of. If you are going to do 3D printed threads inside of a part, you need to ensure they're quite large and you end up with 
size fasteners like this that are so much larger. Now these are great because you have them integrated to the part, so you've eliminated that post-processing, and they're also reasonably high strength because they're part of the part. You don't have to worry about pull out or adhesion issues from secondary inserts. But what you do end up with these sorts of situations is the threads coming in from the top are fine because everything is vertical, but the threads coming in from the side, you end up with that hole sag that we discussed before, where the overhangs right here at the top end up creating kind of an overall hole and the threads aren't really present at the top or the bottom because the very tip of the thread is a point which is so small that the nozzle doesn't really identify it because it's 0.4 millimeters in diameter. You can ignore it, but then you have the sag and the hole can change the diameter and the screw in force can vary within the part or within the design. So if you want something very controllable that will definitely print successfully on the first try and into the millions, which is something you definitely want to pursue, you want a feature like this where you effectively cut out the top and the bottom of the threads to where you still have the threaded sides where it's strong, reliable, and firm because it's in the plane of the layer line, so it's the strongest point anyway, but you also eliminate the overhangs on the top and the narrow islands at the bottom that wouldn't be present otherwise. And you're able to pull them away and create a perfectly symmetrical hole with two cutouts on the top and the bottom that have a reliable threads throughout so that you can put a fastener into here quickly, easily without resistance and ensure that every one of these holes prints perfectly every single time. Now, of course, there are other ways of joining parts together. Rather than using fasteners, you can actually use snap fits. And we have another video where we talk about snap fits over here. Do comment down below if you know of other ways of creating threaded parts or comment around other types of products or processes that you'd like us to review in a little bit more depth in the context of making them mass producible. Have a great day, everybody.